Okay, number eaten per day. So this number here, about two and a half um, pellets per day on average. So we're gonna multiply this number times 2.5. And so we're gonna get 2.5, 2.5, and then per week. So 2.5 times seven, is 17.5. So go ahead and follow along with the data that you got from your owl pellet today. Pause the video, finish your dissecting, count your prey. And um, if you feel like you're a little bit off or you don't know, um, show it to me on the next Zoom call and we will um, take a look at if you are unsure of, of what a bone is. I will do my best. I'm not the expert, but I've done it for over 10 years. So I have some experience. Okay, um, and so then the number eaten per year, a lot of kids don't remember that there's 52 weeks in a year. So we want 17.5 times 52 weeks in a year, and we have 910. And then we're gonna add these up, and we're going to get 1820, okay? So that's our total number of prey per year. Now you go ahead and do it for the prey that you got in your owl pellet. So every group should be different. Um, they all have different data from their own owl pellets. So if their data is, you know, you've got half the class that has the same data, you'll know that they copied off of one person. Okay, um, next. We're going to uh, use data to help analyze the amount of biomass food needed at trophic levels to support your owl. Create a numbers pyramid based on the number eaten per year with one owl at the top and the total annual number of prey below. Use the assumption that an owl produces an average of 2.5 pellets per day. Well, we already got that number. It's right here. So we can just put that here. Okay, that's a lot. You can talk to your kids that that's actually quite a lot. Okay, next. Oh, by the way, we are outside during quarantine in my backyard and you can hear a batting cage in the background. One of my neighbors has a batting cage, so <laughs> they practice. Or actually, I think students come, I think he's a coach and students come over to practice in the batting cage. Okay, um, or tutoring or something, I don't know. Anyway, it's a batting cage, lots of batting going on. Uh, all right, so, <clears throat> um, pray, let's draw a food web that is representative of your pellet. So, this is what pr the prey eats. So, there's a couple of things you can do. Most of the time, I've had students, and I have to start it with them because food webs are are they're not very good at it you would think they're good at it after studying them in seventh grade and ninth grade but they're really not so i have to begin it with them so we have our owl up here and what did we find in the owl pellet what prey did we find we found a shrew we found a mole in our owl pellet so um you could do it a couple of ways you could have them do, and this is what I normally do. I have them make their food web just on what they find in their owl pellet. Or you could have them sketch out all of this so all the prey an owl eats. All right, but I'm gonna show you just using what's found in the owl pellet. So we're gonna look at a mole. So these are the species, kind of. They're not really species, they're you know categories of animals. Um, or plants and um, tell the kids this, that, tell them that in apes, we want to use specific species most of the time for a food web. Um, but for today, we're going to use just a category of species. So we have earthworms. The mole eats earthworms. It eats centipedes, millipedes, snails, slugs, grubs. They sometimes don't know what some of these things are and that's okay, you can teach them. Ants, sow bugs, 
termites, beetles, crickets. Okay, and so all these things go to the mole. So it's the direction energy comes. Uh, sometimes I make it funny, I say, like uh, Austin Powers, get in my belly. So the beetles are going into the belly of the mole. Okay, um, but that doesn't work on an AP test. They have to say it's the direction of energy. All right, so now the shrew. Beetles, I already have beetles. So I can put beetles over to the shrew too, okay. Um, oh, I made a mistake. Did I, what did I do? No, I didn't. Okay, so beetles we already had here. We also have it here. Oh, grasshoppers is new. So I'm gonna put grasshoppers. And I like it when the some of the species are the same for both of them. And um, that way you can see the, the more of a web. So I have grasshoppers, butterfly and mar moth larva, which you don't have to put larva, it's actually just butterfly is one. Moths are not the same, okay, et cetera. So I'm not gonna draw the whole thing out. So list all of these um, and you're gonna have a big old food web here. If students only have like um, the rat, most students are gonna end up with a rat or two Seeds, nuts, grains, vegetables, fruit are all plants. So this would just be one thing of plant. And then they don't know this, but they think fungi is a plant. It's its own category of life. And so we talk about that because they really don't know that. And then insects is its own thing too. And so um, <clears throat> uh if they get a rat, that's really only three things that they're putting down here. So you may want to say that you have to also do um, a rat and a bird or something like that. Um, so you might say you have to at least do the what's in your pellet and another um, prey on here so that they can get more practice with food webs. Okay, turning the page. Use the chart to calculate the biomass eaten. Transfer the last column of your data chart to the second column below. So I'm gonna go to my data chart. I want this last column, mole and shrew here, sorry. So this last column, mole and shrew gets transferred up here to the second column. So 910 and 910. And now I'm going to multiply that number by the third column mass, then convert, and then multiply. So these are the directions. Some kids, they look at this and they're like, I don't know what to do. And you say, well, did you read the directions? And when they read the directions, most of them, nine out of 10, get it. And then one out of 10, they still need some help and that's okay. Okay, so, um, so let's clear. And so 910 times 55, I'm gonna get 50,050. And then 910 times five, so shrews weigh a lot less than a mole. I'm gonna get 4550. Now conversions, at this point in the year, I really haven't worked on metric conversions, so I tell them to divide by a thousand. Um, you've got the kids who remember it from chemistry or physics or whatever class they had. So they're fine with this, but um, some kids need help. They haven't um, really done um, much with metric at this point in time in my class, you may have. So I tell them to divide. And then now they're going to take this, multiply by the food that they eat, the prey eats. So this is the what the prey eats. So 50.05 times 365, I get 18,268. You can tell them to round, they don't have to put the decimals. And then I have 4.55 times 1168. 
Um, and right now I want to give a shout out to Dr. E. Dr. E. Woltson is an apes teacher who's been around forever and he created this lab many, many years ago. Okay, so now we're going to add these up. 18268 plus 5314. So I have 23582 and this is kilograms. Oh, uh, this didn't print very well, but there's two totals they need. So we also have to total up this as well. So they need this in kilograms and they need this in kilograms. Okay, so we're going to create a biomass pyramid. You need to tell them that um, it is a little bit, when we transfer like biomass to, um, in this lab, um, we're assuming that um, this is going to be similar to an um, energy pyramid with calories and kcals. And um, so there's an assumption later on with this. Okay, so we're using this biomass pyramid and this is where they need this number in the front right here, 0.8 kilograms. And then this number goes here, so 54.6 kilograms. And this number goes down here, 23,582 kilograms. Okay, and um, so this is your mainly your produce. Well, it's not doesn't really transfer that way because they're not all producers. So this is a, a little bit of a flaw in this lab and you can talk with them a little bit because really it's going to be all your producers down here. And um, this really is the prey. They're not all producers. And this is going, I'm sorry, the prey's food. And this is going to be the prey. And then this is going to be the owl. Um, now, really, we should split up our um, producers from our the next level up. So we know this is a little bit flawed in that way. Okay, the pyramid above is a biomass pyramid. An energy pyramid usually, but not always, has similar proportions for the trophic levels of organisms. For our purposes today, we're going to use the number of the biomass to calculate energy loss. Again, they are different things, but we're going to assume that in this ecosystem, they have the same proportions. Okay, calculate how many times more energy is at the producer level, first trophic level versus herbivore level. To calculate, divide the first trophic level, so 23,582 kilograms, by the second, 54.6 kilograms, and round. Show your work. So, 23,582 divided by 54.6, and I'm going to round up to 432 times as much energy is on the first versus the second trophic level. How about second versus third trophic levels? So I'm going to do 54.6 kilograms divided by 0.8 kilograms. 54.6 divided by 0.8. And I'm going to get 68 times more energy at this trophic level. Okay, so <clears throat> now we're gonna do percent loss. Now usually it's 10 times as much. This is not 10 times as much because 10 is an average and sometimes you lose a lot more. Like in here, we lose a lot more. Now, um, this is a little bit more than what your students might see because with rats, you don't have quite as much um, as this one, but you get kind of a lot, so all right. There's also some inaccuracies in here because it's also the size. We get a lot of baby rats. And so um, that's gonna skew our results a little bit, but we can talk about the error. Right now, we really want them just practicing and understanding trophic levels. And this is a great lab for them to understand energy loss and trophic levels. Now we're gonna do percent change. The AP exam loves, loves, loves percent change. So, how much energy lost from the first to the second? Okay, so we're going from the 
first. We're going to the second. So we're ending at the second. So we're ending at the second. So we're going to do our ending amount is the second. 54.6 minus 23,582 divided by 23,582 times 100. So in the calculator, I'm going to do 54.6 minus 23,582. And then I'm going to um, divide that by 23,582. And I'm gonna round, and it's going to be a negative uh, 99%. I'm not going to round because then it would round to 100. I'm not gonna do that. So, so it's a 99 percent loss of energy. So it's a 90% loss on average. This one happens to be a 99% loss. Okay, what about going from the second to the third? So we're ending at 0.8. We started at 54.6 and we're divided by 54.6. I'm trying to get you in the sun. My shadows are moving as I'm outside. 0.8 minus 54.6 divided by 54.6 and I'm going to get about another, it's 98.5, so a little bit less, so negative. And um, <clears throat> you can have them put the decimal here, 99.7 I think that was, and this is 98.5. So again, still more than a 90% loss. You can talk about with birds, there's going to be a, a higher loss because they don't weigh very much because of their hollow bones, but they need a ton of food because they fly and their metabolisms are so high. So you're going to get more of an energy loss there. Okay.